Hey, everybody, it's Mark Patterson back again with another great episode of Finding Your Summit, all about people overcoming adversity and finding their way. And before I get into today's amazing guest and fellow NFL player, I want to draw the attention to my website, www.markpattersonnfl.com. And of course, we've got a whole load of podcasts that are up there of incredible people doing amazing things, like my guest today. Actually, we've done 225 of these. And if you can go in and give a ratings and review on Apple, I would greatly appreciate it for the popularity of the show. More people need to be inspired, just like me, of doing uh, really cool things in life and pushing forward. So that's very important for all of us. Uh, That's number one. Number two, we continue to raise money for my daughter, Amelia Zeverest. Um, she's still in a fight. Many people are also in that same fight. All the proceeds go to higher ground, um, hundred percent of all those things. My daughter, of course, has, has dealt with epilepsy for the last 16 years, and she's getting to a point where she's now, I think, getting over the hump. And I think we're going to get her there, but of course it has to do with the generosity of people sending in money, just like the Raiders have done, just like the NFL has done. So I'm very grateful uh, for that. And finally, I continue to push the NFL film that was done on my Everest journey, uh, searching for the summit. It can now be found on YouTube. Please go there, check it out. It's very heartfelt, and I think it was epic and well done by the NFL. So again, I'm I'm very grateful for that opportunity and actually making the seven summits and scaling to the top of Mount Everest this past May. And On that note, that very, very high note, we're going to jump into today's guest because he also stood on some pretty tall mountains himself. His name is Alan Ball. Alan, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm doing pretty good. A good day. A little cold here in Houston, but I'm doing good. Well, I got snow coming down here in Sun Valley, Idaho. So you're in Houston. I'm in Sun Valley and uh, two opposite ends of the world. But look, we're here. But the one thing that we are united on is our both love and passion for playing sports. We both had the very unique, amazing opportunity to be blessed to play in the National Football League at that level. As you know, only 1% of the people that that start off as little kids actually make it that far. And I'm, I'm, I, I wanted to get to, to, to jump in because it seems like, you know, going back and doing some research on you, like every level – when you're in college at Illinois, you just kind of progressed, you know, you, you did okay. You got to play as a freshman, sophomore, but you really excelled, you know, your senior year and the same thing in high school, winning the state championship and things like that. And, and so I, I'm, I'm curious, like, where did that confidence and where did that, I always go back to the same kind of theme with many of our guests. There was a mentor or there was a coach or there was somebody that pushed you. It could have been your parents could have been, you know, your friends that you're hanging out with. There's one per- person in particular, but, you know, where was that guiding light that like helped you shine the way that vision that you could actually play and that confidence that we all have to be over the moon confident and cocky and everything else to be able to play, especially at the NFL level to make that jump. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's an interesting question that you asked me. I was just talking to my mother about this this morning on the phone, on our phone conversation, you know, at every level, there were different motivations that I had, you know, outside of, like you said, just being blessed with talent that the Lord gave me at a very young age and being blessed with the opportunities that he put in front of me. I think, you know, in in high school for me, the challenge was always being looked at as the smallest guy on the field. So that always put a chip on my shoulder, no matter what. So it was like, I was always fighting out of the element of being looked at as the underdog. And so I, I think that developed for me, over time into that's who I became. You know, when I got to college, it was like, okay, I, I got recruited pretty high, but midway through, I had another coach come in and looking back at my experience, that coach may have been the best coach for me. You know, Ron Zook, when he came in, I, I can remember one of the conversations he had, you know, one of our very first conversations was him challenging me in a way that I had never been challenged before. You know, I had started two years, you know, I'm a sophomore, I'm thinking pretty highly of myself going into my junior year, nothing can stop me. I get a new coach and he comes in, in and tells me, hey, look, I don't I don't know if you're a starter in this conference, not only on this team, but in this conference, mm-hmm. which lit a fire under me like I hadn't been lit before. You know, I know I've been told I was too small my whole career, but now you're telling me, OK, you don't even think I'm sp- supposed to be where I'm at. 
And, you know, looking back on it, it's like, you know, I was faced with a situation where it was like, okay, do I transfer? Do I leave? Do I run from this challenge? But it's like, okay, I'm going to answer this bell. Now I have something to prove to the coach that's right here in front of me. I don't, did, it, did it challenge me and excel in a way that I didn't think I was capable of, but it all, also made me reattach to my faith and remember the reasons why I was put in Illinois for the first place. You know, I wasn't put there for the coach that brought me there. God put me there. And I had to remember that. And so that drive, all of those things came out of me. And, and as I look back, like you said, I never looked at it in the way that you put it. It's like you, I started off at a level and I just continued to progress. And even when I got to the league, you know, I think I got to the NFL. I was one of the smallest guys. I, I had an amazing first training camp with the Cowboys. I was drafted in the seventh round, lower than what I thought I should be. And to be put on practice squad right away, it was like, wow you know, okay, now I'm not good enough again. And it just lit a fire under me that, that, that continues to burn. And I think looking back on my football career, I think it's helped me now in my personal life and my career business-wise because I can look at situations and just, and just see how much better I've gotten. How when I really focus my energy, how will I really give, when I really give something my attention and I attach my faith to it, the things I can do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not only helped me in football, but it's helping me in life right now. So, you know, I, I, as I was talking to my mother, I told her, you know, all of the experiences that I had in my life, I can honestly look back on now. And I have a story around them. You know, it's given me a, a testimony, a story to tell someone else, to share with somebody else on that journey, on that path, whatever it is. And that's kind of where I'm at now. It's, it's finding a place to speak, finding a place where people can hear my voice to know, hey, look, been there, done that, came through it. Look where I'm at now. And, you know, that that's been something that's really important to me in my journey is not only traveling it and overcoming these circumstances, but being able to look back, reflect and share it with others. Uh, there's a lot to unpack. And I want to go back to Coach <laughs> Zook at Illinois. OK, so so first of all, what, what is your size uh, well, back then or now? Well, let's go back then. Like okay, in college. So when I when, when I was in college, I was about six one, one hundred and sixty five pounds. Yeah, so you're a skinny, tall guy, relatively yeah, speaking. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's hard to push around, you know. Obviously, yeah. and you're a cornerback. I'm a receiver, so if you're some gunned up receiver, you know, that's hard to, you know, you're probably good on your feet, but yeah. you know that strength of the line of scrimmage, especially one on one, gets tough. It's tough, right? So what was it about? what coach Zooks took that he saw on film that he'd seen from your freshman year, your sophomore year. And now, like you said, you're, you think you've got the world by the tail, you know, you're a starter, all this stuff. And he's just like, you know, and I don't even know, I'm not sure if you're made to be a starter. Like what, what was the gap between what he was looking at and what you needed to become? Well, you know, I always had the fighter in me. Um, I can remember at a young age, that's why my dad took me out on the football field. He was, you know, I was in school. I was aggressive. I was on the basketball court. I was fighting people during the basketball court. I was, I was the aggressive kid, you know, the under the little size aggressive one. So he was like, you know, you got this aggression. We're going to put you on the football field and just see, you know, what happens. And so I always had the fighter in me. I always had what I what we call in the late when we played that dog in me, you know, that dog on the special teams. I always yeah. had that in me. That, that was, that was, that was just in me. That, that heart was there. But in college, I wasn't connecting the dots with the skill. So I had the dog, but I wasn't putting the prep work in, in the film room. I wasn't paying attention to detail with my footwork. I wasn't paying attention to detail on how to be a little corner and be able to press and use my size to my advantage. So there were things that I had that were in me that were innate that I was given from birth. I was just blessed with, but I wasn't taking the next step when it came to, okay, now what's the skill piece of it? Yeah. You'll fight every guy that comes out here. Yeah. You'll give your last to the end of the play every time, every snap. We know you'll run from this corner of the field to that corner of the field, every chance you get, but what are you doing skill wise to match it? And I think that's where he stepped in and said, Hey, look, there's nothing wrong with you. And now looking back, I can see it. He was saying, there's nothing wrong with you. Your level of play doesn't match where you're at right now. You're a big 10 corner. Your level of play needs to match what I look for in a big 10 corner. Not your size, that you can be whatever size you want to be. I know you've had a fight in you, but now what are you doing to take your game play to the next level? And I think with him, you know, sitting me down as a junior, the first couple of day, games after I've been starting, you know, that, 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 that's wake up. That's yeah. what, what can I do different? Not, 
not, and you know, I, I talk to younger guys now because my first thought wasn't to escape. It wasn't to transfer. It wasn't to leave. It wasn't to run. It was to, how do I prove you wrong? And I think that it created a habit for me, you know, and that habit is the discipline of doing what I need to do to silence people around me in terms of naysay. Yeah, it's interesting because today's game has really transformed at the college level. Oh, and wow. this is what I mean by that is that they've, as you know, they, they've now introduced this whole thing called the transfer portal. It happened mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially those kids that go off and things aren't going quite right, you know, they can just check out and say, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm out of here. I'm going to some other mm -hmm. college. And it's happening yeah. left and right. It's kind of become the new recruiting tool for many of these different colleges that are out there to go find these kids that maybe a chip on their shoulder or something didn't go quite right, but there's still a four or five or three star or whatever that come out. And that is, so it's interesting. I go back to my situation and, and I think that, you know, like as I was researching on you, we are very similar in more ways than you know. And, and one of those things, we're both seven round, round draft picks. We both had our highs and our lows in the NFL, cut, traded, brought back, all that kind of stuff. Back in my day, it, they put you, they hid you on the injured reserve, and then they developed this, this practice squad thing that you were on. Either way, I would have either been on the practice squad or you would have been on the, the injured reserve and told to go down, right? Yeah. But however you want to split it, 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 it comes up fairly equal for you and I. And, and I, I've thought a lot about this, and that is this. this is when I got to the University of Washington the school I played at, you know, I found myself way in over my head. It was too... I was too small from the standpoint and not my height, but just like you, I was too skinny. I couldn't bench anything. I couldn't push people around. I didn't have the body to play in what is now the PAC 12. Mm -hmm. And so, and so the point of all this, and I think the point of what you're trying to say is that this coach challenged you and just go, look, you're not playing here unless you like get your, your body, your mind and your soul all in one place to play mm -hmm. at what I consider my standard is that big 10 level. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened to me. If I hadn't dug in, I had like my moment of truth. I remember like it was yesterday, it was my freshman year. And I was just like, I'm clearly not going anywhere. Like I, this is, this is a, I can choose door A or door B, you know, and it was my choice. Mm -hmm. I could either quit and go home mm -hmm. or I could pick myself up. And here's the whole thing about what you had to go through and what I had to go through is that there is no certainty that if you did x y and z that that was going to equate to you becoming a starter and for me ultimately becoming a starter mm -hmm. you know at the university of washington but i had to put in the work mm -hmm. and i hadn't really understood what that had meant up until that point because things in high school especially were very easy for me just like you you went to the state championship you made mm -hmm. one of it mm -hmm. so so it, it, it's really interesting, like, you know, the parallels between your career and my career. And because you didn't have that quick out, the transfer portal, to go and dash off to some other school that would have been flashing the, you know, we'll start you and you're going to be all world and all this other kind of stuff. But what it, it, it actually served you much better in life of where you sit today as a retired player and the life lessons that you took along the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and like you said, looking back on it, looking at life and look, cause I, I can, <laughs> for years, for years, for years, even when I was playing, I can remember coach Zook getting a job in, in green Bay as like the special, special teams coach. And for years I held on to something that in my mind was like, I don't like this dude. You know what I mean? This dude benched me. This dude told me I was nothing. This dude made my, my life a living, but looking back on it, he was placed in my life for a reason. Without him, I don't know if I would have progressed to where I am now. Not saying it would have happened. Not, like you said, not saying it wouldn't have equaled X, Y, and Z. But I just know that challenge, that speed bump that I went over not only taught me lessons about the business, about the game, it taught me about myself. Mm. And now looking back, I, you know, I, I haven't spoken to Coach Zook in years. But hopefully, maybe he may see this podcast, yeah. you know, and you might want to have him on. But you know what? I appreciate you. I appreciate you for that challenge. I appreciate you for not crowning me when I thought I needed to be crowned. Mm. Um, and, and that, like I said, that for me was a gift in itself now that I can look back on it. It, it, it sure is interesting how we look back. Like I, I, I think I look at this podcast, for example, 
mm-hmm. right? That I've I've been doing the last two or three years, and it's it's become quite popular. But a lot of the subjects and the people I talk to, I couldn't have done this podcast ten years ago, twenty years ago, because I didn't have the life experience that you're talking about mm-hmm. to really help understand and see things in a much brighter light. And that there's actually a reason and there's a path mm-hmm. to many of the things getting cut or being brought mm-hmm. back or we, you know, I, I speak a lot of times metaphorically because I climb mountains around the world. And so there's peaks and there's valleys, right? And there's mm-hmm. peaks and there's valleys. And so the valley is you're going through a rough sh- a patch and how you can respond to that. And then how do you climb back up on top of that mountain to then again, again, you know, you come back down to the side and figure it out again. And, and this is all what sets us up for greatness, I think, in terms of becoming the best person that you can be, not that you're all pro Mm -hmm. in the NFL Mm -hmm. or you're the best real estate developer of all time. That really doesn't matter. It's the best. It's maximizing your potential, your personal potential for becoming the best version of yourself. That's how I see it. Yeah. And also who you can help while you're doing it, you know, like who you can help along the way now, now that you're there, now that you've reached that pinnacle, whatever it is that, that the place that you're going How do you look at it and not translate it to someone else? Or how do you help someone else with what you've been through? You know, and and, and that's the part that I think for me and looking back on my life is is just, it's now is how can I serve others? You know, like how can I serve others with what I have and what I've done? I know you talked about the platforms a little bit. You know, when I was playing in the league, was, was I ready to use my platform the way that I needed to use it? You know, I had a platform bigger than a lot a lot of people could hope for or wish for. You know, we didn't have Instagram and Twitter when I first started. You know, we had Twitter, maybe we didn't have Instagram. Mm-hmm. But if we did, you know, I'm not a big user now, but would I have been ready to use the platform the way that it needs to be used? Now I'm in a place that I'm able to use my platform, I think, I believe, the way that it needs to be used. There were some things, there was some growth that I needed to have. There was some maturity there that needed to develop. There were things that I needed to see, like you spoke on the experiences that I needed to have, whether it was growth in my marriage, whether it was growth in my family, that looking back on it now is creating this man that can step on the platform and now share the story in a way that is genuine, in a way that is 100, in a way that now I can speak to the person that I need to speak to. And yeah, like, I don't mean to go on too long about what you're saying, but yeah, I, I echo a lot of what you're saying in, in terms of who we become from our experiences. Yeah, but I think that's all part of the life journey too. I mean, you're saying that, right? Where you sit today having fully developed, well, you're probably still in that growth pattern, but you're you're a much better place to see what the opportunities are that you can turn around and help others. I would agree with the same thing. I mean, when I was running around, and it's, you know, it's hard too because when you're when you're an NFL player, you have to be so selfish and you have to be self-consuming about what you're going to take on because it's all in and you can't have any sh- signs of weakness or anything else. And so it's a, it, for those people who can do it, you know, God bless them. And it's incredible that they can actually wind their person about their personalities back just a little bit mm-hmm. so that they can actually take on these other things there mm-hmm. or again, turning around and serving and helping others. Mm-hmm. And, and for me, you know, I've, I've been, because, because my daughter has epilepsy, you know, I've, I've kind of thrust myself in and I've had, I do have a platform and it, but it's been after all these years of me maturing and, and, you know, post 50 and everything else, like, where's my life going? And really a lot of self-reflection that's had to have a full 360 circle about what's really life all about. And I think we all get there at different times. And if you're 24 and playing in the league and you can do that, then, you know, you're amazing. For me, it took me much longer, you know, to like figure that whole thing out. Um, And, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out. Like, you know, the growth trajectory for, for all humankind, you know, if we're not going up, we're going down. And so it's continuing to try to, and I love what you just said too, about, you know, not just growth in yourself, but growth in your marriage and growth in helping others, because that's what it is so much about at the end of the day, you know, this, this united community that we all live in, right. Mm-hmm. To, to benefit each other, especially we're talking today on the 21st of December. And it's, uh, it's really the time of giving and reflecting mm-hmm. and thinking back about where we're going forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. And like you said, it all ties together. And, you know, I kind of, when I, when I talk about life, I kind of relate it to football, right. It's kind of like thinking about that guy and we all know him who 
freak athlete, can lift the weight room, you know, 40 blazing, you know, can backpedal, you know, and come out of a break like in nothing you've ever seen before. But he doesn't have the longevity in the league because he won't put the time in the film. Yeah. You know, because it's a complete picture, right? Like everything you do as a player, you need to be a complete. The complete players are the players that last. It's not the players that are the flash and the pain that can run fast because eventually people will catch up. It's another guy being drafted next year who can probably run just as fast as you. Mm-hmm. So the league is always evolving. It's always getting younger. So those skills that you have, yeah, they're great, but other people will be able to catch that. They'll be able to match that. So how are you developing the complete player? And when you talked about my marriage, it's like I, I came to a point when I got done playing, it was how do I become a complete better man? You know, how do I make everything in sync where I'm taking strides to be better? Not just in my career, not just in my finances, not just with my family, but also, hey, look, what about your marriage? Well, why, why aren't you focused? Why, it needs to be the complete because, hey, look, if you don't have all of the things hitting on the cylinders that just like they need to, like when we're a player, it, it'll come to an end sooner than you think. So just creating the habits of making sure that everything around you, everything that you're involved around in is complete. And that, you know, if, if you're a religious person, that if, if faith aligns you where you need to be, that everything that you do in life will involve God. You know, not just certain areas, but everything, mm-hmm. everything. If, 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 it's, if it's two out of three, that's not good enough. Yeah. Just like if you can lift the weight room and run fast, that's not good enough. Are you studying your film? Are you taking care of your body at night? So it's looking at it as, as a, in its totality and saying, hey, look, how do I become complete? And when you start to figure out, and like I said, I'm not there yet. Like I'm still on this journey now. Yeah, I'm yeah. still on this journey, Mark. But how, how send my vision on how I become complete? How do I complete this circle of who Alan Ball is? Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that circle will be complete once they're throwing dirt on, your, on yourself <laughs> when you're six feet under. But, okay, so you're drafted by the Cowboys. You play for the Texans, the Jaguars, the, the, the Bears, you know, a variety of different teams. So now let's, let's go post NFL. So, so like a lot of players, you know, you're, you're on this trajectory and you've got to be all in. And it's really hard to be diluted in terms of having all these other interests. And now you, you go off the cliff like I did and like most people do. And, and how did you prepare yourself for life after football? For me, it took me a couple of years before I found my way again. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for everybody, it's like a different place. And some have been able to have a, a seamless transition from mm-hmm. point A to point B. But for you, what was that like? You know, it was it was I, I, I did things earlier in my career to prepare me for it to be easier than what a lot of people have to go through. I think one thing that I did and I talked about it a lot, and this was actually a path that I kind of drifted off on when I first got done is was speaking about financial literacy and mm-hmm. understanding finances. Um, I think throughout my career, I can remember telling my advisor one of the first meetings we had, I told her, look, if, if I give you a dollar and I turn my back, if I come back a week, three weeks, four months, I don't care what I got. I want to just see a dollar. Mm-hmm. I don't care what where it goes from there, but I want to come back and at least be able to see a dollar because I put that there. And so that was my mind, for, my, my thought process in terms of saving, in terms of investing. It was, hey, I just want to save it. You know, I just want to save it. So I think that was the first step for me. So when I was done playing, I, I think I did a relatively good, good job. Not perfect by any means, because, you know, I can look back and look at some of the things I paid for and spent. That Look, I, <laughs> wish, I, could, I <laughs> wish I could get that money back. But at the end of the day, I prepared myself in a way that I gave myself a little bit of time and a little bit of leeway when I got done to say, hey, look, I can venture off and coach for the next two years without worrying about how much it's going to make. I can invest in this property and, and learn about the process of developing this process and rehabbing this process without worrying about how I'm going to make the money back right away. Mm-hmm. I, I put myself in a position where I could explore different avenues and and see what I enjoy, you know, see, see, see what what I was passionate about and see at the end of the day, then I know if I can align the passion, I can figure out how to make it work. Just like I did football. Mm-hmm. I, I have the passion. Now I know how to make it work after I had a passion for it. That's without a doubt. Like I align my faith. I align my attitude. I'm good. 
after I figured that piece out. So I think the transition for me, it kind of, you know, it, it went through some, I had an explored story stage, you know, yeah. I, it, it was, it was some moving parts in there. I, I was a little bit of everywhere when I first got done. But like I said, there were some third, certain things that kept me grounded. Like I said, you know, I, I, I waited until I was finishing up playing to get married. So that was already a, a, in transition itself, being newly married. That's a whole, you know, that's a yeah. whole journey in itself. But, you know, fortunately enough, I, me and my partner always talk about marriage. It's like, look, it's like buying that property. If you buy right, you always good. You know what I mean? The, the yeah. important piece is to buy. You know, yeah. and I, 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 my wife, my, my wife was the buy. I bought right. So yeah. all of the trouble you go through, it's going to have, you're going to have the ups and downs with it. But yeah. if, you, if you know at the end of the day, you bought right, it'll work out itself out at the end. And having that partner through that transition for me, you know, really helped me. You know, it, it helped me. We, I, you know, we had to go through counseling. I had to learn how to communicate. You know, I never, you know, I had to yeah. learn how to, I thought I knew how to, I, I was a speech kind of, I, I, I was a communications major. I thought yeah. I knew how to communicate, you know what I mean? But I had to learn that. And there were so many things that I had to learn. And I could look at people that were involved in my transition that I leaned on. And I don't even think they knew I was leaning on them at the time, but I was. And I think, you know, because it's hard when you get done playing. It's hard. I don't care what anybody's saying. It's hard. And I wasn't a person who lived off of the fame or or needed the attention or any of that. But just the transition in itself of going from having a schedule and something to do eight hours a day for nine months out the year to where, okay, I got these eight hours a day and these nine months a year with nobody telling me what to do. What do I fill my time with? Yeah. You know, like I, I, it's a lot of things out here that you can get involved in that, that aren't that necessarily the right path and that can throw you off. So that transition for me, like I said, the people around me, I uh, go back to my faith again and just being able to prepare myself financially and being diligent with my finances on the front end, you know, thinking about, that 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 transitional step, I think, is what helped me kind of get my footing to say to my next step. Yeah, no, I can relate with everything you just said. And one of the things that was difficult for me is, you know, you can't replicate. You know, I'm an executive for Sports Illustrated now, which is great. And I've had, you know, my my career has evolved over time, and I've had some 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 good wins. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't replicate catching the last second touchdown over the defender of Michigan, right? Mm-hmm. And letting the end zone with 100,000 people going cuckoo, right? I mean, it's just like that you just, you just don't get that. And that's what sports feeds you. And you have to figure out a different way to transition that same energy into something new to really propel you forward. And then, like you said, all the things of, of growth and learning and reaching out and mentors, you know, they all matter. They all matter at the end of the day. Well, that's great for you. I mean, I'm happy that, you know, things have, have worked out the way they've worked. I've got a, a question, and this is now taking another right-hand turn here. How does somebody get on the show Survivor? Mm. I told you I was all over the place when I got done. <laughs> I, I told you I was all over the place. You know, so it's a lot of, so, okay, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. I, uh, when 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 me and my wife begin living together, she has been a Big Brother fan forever, mm-hmm. and you know I I was, show, you're, you're you're saying the show Big Brother yeah Big Brother yeah the, okay the show Big Brother okay um, and I have never she's a part of Big Brother's Big Sisters too but <laughs> the show yeah. Big Brother um so I I was never a huge fan until you know we we started dating and and I I kind of started to like the show I kind of started watching it on a weekly basis and I kind of became a fan after a while so I'm like yeah. okay well when I'm done I was done and I didn't have a lot to do I'm like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna apply for Big Brother just be on the show be in the house for a, a couple of months I don't have much to do like you know I'm, I'm at home chilling like I might as well so applied for that show and um somehow my audition tape got to Survivor and they called me and said hey look um are you interested in, in coming on? And I'm like, no, goodbye. You know, it's not a chance. I'm not, <laughs> I've, I've seen Survivor. I know it's about, not a chance of getting me on there. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not interested. And I thought about it and they called again. And I'm, I'm like, you know, okay, look, I think about it a little differently. Where is it at? <laughs> and they said, Fiji. I said, okay, well, okay, cool. You know, I, I, I really consider this. I'll come out to the audition. I'll go through the entire process just as you would have me and do it. And, and before I know it, I was knee deep in it. You know, I was picking out a wardrobe of, of what, what the clothes that I, you know, I was there. And it was like, okay, I'm in it now. And Mar, let me tell you, it wasn't me. 
like from from where I sat before I did it, I could tell you not a chance. It wasn't me. Nobody, any anybody I knew would have ever thought that that was something I would be involved in. Yeah. And it was probably one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Wow. Um, yeah. Some of the people, the experience, the challenge, the reflection, the amount of time that you get to spend with yourself, your thoughts. It's a lot of time with no phone, <laughs> no electricity know anything just your thoughts and the people around you you know yeah it's it's easy to try to say we think about the game the entire time we're out there Mm -hmm. i give credit to anybody that really does that because it's no way possible that when you're watching the sun go the moon go from over here to over there to know what time morning is going to be that you're only thinking about the game you know you think about family you think about your life you think about your progress you think about things that you've accomplished you think about how you actually got there what you're going to do when you get home you think about all of that. And I think, you know, the reflection that I had throughout that period and the growth and the things that I was able to see, it happened for a reason. And I'm glad that I stepped up to the challenge when, when it came through. And like I said, I always thank CBS for that opportunity because I know it's p- plenty of fans and plenty of people that line up to do that show. And for them to choose me, it was, I'm really thankful for that. Huh. You know, as you're just saying that I couldn't help but compare the show survivor in your experience to me surviving Mount Everest, <laughs> no electricity, cold, you didn't know what time it is. I mean, there's a lot of those same parallels. Listen, when I did a little research on you, I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> like, wait a minute, you know, cause I, I think I've had challenges and I, yeah. and I definitely, I know this podcast is I'm the guest, but I definitely want to hear a little bit more about your thought process <laughs> to go from NFL to saying, look, I'm climbing this this mountain you know what i mean like that that to me is in itself like i want to hear a little bit about it you know a little bit yeah well i mean you know as i mentioned at the beginning of the show uh i would recommend you go see the movie that the nfl did (laughs) you you know yeah searching for the summit i knew you were doing it well it just it goes through but you know it's not easy and it was a big goal and it's it's about being committed to certain things in your life like you're talking about being committed to your work, to God, to your relationship, to other things like that. And for me, you know, I was coming out of a a relationship, long-term marriage. And, you know, I just had to set a big goal for me. And that big goal was not just to run 10K or something, but really go global and try to become the first NFL player to climb the seven summits, which led me to climbing these different mountains all the way around the globe. So I've literally been on seven continents, climbed the highest mountains on each one. And the kind of the grand finale was Mount Everest. And, and because of COVID, because of bad weather, because of other things, it took me nine years to complete a, a seven year, well, seven mountain, you know, journey. And so, you know, the parallels that you were talking about before is that when you are way out there and you're, you're where you can't, there's no cell zones or anything, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of time for reflection. And so for me, the, the mountains, probably more than anything, really, helped with a lot of healing that I had to go through and just really reflect in my life and where I want to go and how I wanted to see kind of this, this last chapter, you know, mm-hmm. play out for me. And so, you know, really dug in and now I'm kind of going through this next evolution of that, of what's next, because I, mm-hmm. I took on this massive goal. I accomplished it. And now it's just like, okay, now we're going to phase B mm-hmm. and I'm trying to figure out exactly what phase B I, I'm, I'm, I'm gainfully employed. I do my podcast. I'm involved in philanthropy. You know, I do things like that, but that's not enough. I've got to be challenged physically mm-hmm. in some kind of way. And that's what really helps. It's not even about the accomplishment, like the top of Everest. It was the journey, in my case, two years of working out, working out, working out, working out, working out, working out, doing all my thing, doing my thing to make that NFL roster, to climb that mountain, mm-hmm. right? To see that vision, that, 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 that both you, you know, you climbed your own Everest, making the NFL is mm-hmm. not Everest. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and yep. And so that, so then that, you know, that's where I was and that's where I'm kind of going as I kind of look into 2022 and beyond, like, how does that look for me exactly? Mm, that's dope. No, that's dope, man. And I, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's how, and, and I know it's a challenge, is how do you set that bar higher than the bar that's, you know, you've already set, how do you get higher? Yeah. You know, and how do you, how do you, because we're, we're, we're all about challenge and we're all about risk and we're all about accomplishment, you know, and, and at some point, and, and it's, it's funny when you think about the league and I don't know your stance on it, it, 
I can look at my career and I can honestly tell you at no point in my career until probably before it came to an end did I ever play and think about money. And no, no point did I ever think about money the entire time I played until the end of my career. And honestly, when it came to any, that's when I started thinking about how much I was making the checks, you know, throughout my career, it was always for me about the challenge, mm. about the struggle, about the fight, about this next play, about me being here and trying to be the best that I can be proving somebody wrong. It was always about the challenge for me in terms of playing the game. And that now is the transformation now is like, what's the challenge? You know, how do I take a bigger step than what I just took? Yeah. And hearing you talk about it, it's like, man, like after you go through the seven summit, it's like, what's your next challenge? You know, I, yeah. I can see like in terms of what you're doing in philanthropy, in terms of the steps you're taking, in terms of being gainfully employed, in terms of all the things that you have that other people will look and say, you know what? You got it going on. You all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you probably accomplished more than I can dream about. But for you, you still got it like, well, what's next? Yeah. And that's what's us from a lot of people. And when you look at the similarities that us as former NFL players, us as NFL players in itself, we challenge ourselves in a way that a lot of people can't understand. Now, for what reason we do, it might not always be the same. Where, where that came, where that nature came from for you may be different from me. Mm -hmm. You know, my childhood, my upbringing was different from yours. But one similarity that we have and that you just spoke about and that I can relate to is you finding that challenge, even though you just came off of another challenge that a lot of people would say, man, you've accomplished everything. But it's like, yeah, but what's next? Yep. So, yeah, I can definitely hear that, man. I can echo that for sure. <laughs> well, listen, uh, let me ask you this. Where can people find you at? I'm hard to find, Mark. No, you are. Hard it, to find, it, took me, it took me some digging. I'm hard to find, man. But that's um, okay. you, know, you know what? I, I actually wore this shirt, the Developing Great Athletes. Um, I got a partner who he has his own program in Nashville, Tennessee, and they do some great things um, with youth um, and volunteering in the community. They just had an event this weekend where they have 45 volunteers mm -hmm. of student athletes, high school and pro, giving out food and providing clothing for the homeless. Um, just what he instills and some of the guys that he's worked with that have gone from high school to college and even pro. Um, he's doing some great things. I think the place you find me is behind other people, man. Uh, you know, I'm not you're not going to see me on Instagram. You're not going to see me, you know, doing other things. You know, I, I, I'm behind a lot of businesses that that need support. You know, and I, I enjoyed it where I'm at, man. I, I kind of Instagram, LinkedIn, I don't have a huge following on either, you know. But, I know that. <laughs> so it, I, I'm hard to find, but man, I'm I'm found by those who are looking in the right places, you know. Yeah. And I'm found by the people who need to be found. I need to be found by. So that's I enjoy it that way. I enjoy it that way. And um, yeah, the people that are looking, they'll find me. They'll, yeah. They'll find me. No, just like I did. I, I found you yeah. in the, the NFL PA uh, newsletter that came out. Uh, listen, I want to say this with 100% certainty. Um, obviously, we have this common bond with playing in the NFL together. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the reason why I do these podcasts is to meet people like you. We didn't know each other from Jack before this call. And I really believe you have made me a better person. Mm -hmm. And I believe my life is better because you're in it now. Mm -hmm. And um, I thank you so much for coming on the show and, and sharing your story, your vision, where you've been, how you got there, how you've overcome your adversity to be the person and the man that you are today. So thank you so much for that. Man, definitely appreciate you having me. And I told I told my wife, you know, she was, she asked me about the podcast. She's like, man, that's quick. You're doing it already. I said, yeah, you know, because when you sent the email, honestly, when you sent it, I'd heard of you before, you know, and, you know, through some of your work. And what stuck out to me was your title of your podcast. Yeah. And before I even asked you any questions, I said, yeah, I do it. Because when I saw the title on that LinkedIn profile that popped up in my email, yeah. it was I read your title and I said, man, I think I know what you mean with this title. I can't be exact. I think I know what you mean. And I know what it means to me by reading it. Just for that simple fact, I'm inspired doing it. And then I came back and followed up with an email. Hey, like, what's this going to be about? Because no. I know I've read your title and I'm already doing it, but what's this thing going to be about, man? So like I said, I appreciate you having me and I appreciate the work that you're doing. And, you know, like you said, being able to meet new people, 
Um, I'm, I think I'm, I'm in that. That's the new phase for me because I've never been a people meter. You know, I've always been to keep stay to the back, keep quiet, yeah. you know, do my thing, get in and get out. But I think with growth, I've learned to, hey, say, look, you know, it's, it's people you can reach if you put yourself out there a little bit. So I'm working on it man. I'm working on it. Eventually, you'll see me with a lot of connections on LinkedIn. You might see me with some more followers. on. Right. I'm going to take your pod, podcast when I get a copy of it. I'm going right. to put it up. So, yeah, man, I, like I said, I appreciate you having me, man. I genuinely do. All right, buddy. Listen, appreciate you coming on and uh, nothing but the best for you over the holidays here. And so on that note, we'll close it. He is the one, the only. Alan Ball, thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. You got All right. It. Hey, and thank you so much for listening to the Find Your Summit podcast. We are so glad to have you along for this journey. And if you enjoy the show, please tell a friend, share it on iTunes, spread it to the planet. We're looking to broadcast this to every person that is out there because, as you know, everybody has their own summit that they're going after. Okay, if you're looking to follow my journey, you can find that through my social links on markpattisonnfl.com. That's Mark, M-A-R-K, Pattison, P-A-T-T-I-S-O-N, NFL.com. So until the next podcast, just remember, clear eyes, full hearts, and remember, it takes a little more to make a champion, so make it happen. Thank you. Bye. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.